All right, thanks for watching. And want to know what the hardest question on the hardest multivariable calculus test is? Well, here you can find it out. And let me tell you first how hard this is. I asked this in my multivariable calculus class of 120 students. No one knew how to solve that question. Zero out of 120 got this right. And then I was like, okay, maybe it's hard. Let me ask that to my more advanced PDE class, partial differential equations. 60 students, one student got it right. So just to tell you, it's a pretty hard problem, but maybe you can solve it. And it's a two-parter. So first of all, if you have a vector field F, which is PQR, then we define a function times a vector field, just a vector field of FP, FQ, FR. And this is a vector field, so you can define a divergence. And, and here's what I'm claiming. I'm claiming that the divergence of FF equals to, first of all, F times the divergence of F. Or maybe let me write this in product rule way. So I'm going to derive a product a product rule for this. So I'm claiming that it's the gradient of F dotted with F plus F times the divergence of F. If you think about it, this is the only possible way to write this, because here we want the scalar. And, well, the gradient is a vector, F is a vector, so you have to take the dot product. Here, F is a function, F, F, capital F is a vector field, so the only way to make this a scalar is F times the divergence. This part people got, so that's not a problem because the divergence of FF, that's the divergence of, again, FP, FQ, FR, and that is FP, X plus FQ, Y plus FR, Z. Just by the definition of the divergence, you just take the x derivative here, the y derivative here, the z derivative here, and you just sum it up. Okay. And now, notice you can use a product loop. So it's fx times p plus f times px plus fy times p plus f times pi m and then plus fz times p oh, ah, no, not pi m, sorry, q, <laughs> q yam. And then Fz times R plus F times Rz. And the nice thing is, now write this in terms of columns if you want. Then what you get is Fxp plus Fyq plus Fzr. And then plus, notice here you can factor out F. So it's F times Px plus Qy plus Rz. But what this is, it's just Fx, Fy, Fz, dotted with uh, PQR, plus F times, this is just the divergence of F, and at the end you get gradient of little f, dotted with uh, capital F, plus F times the divergence of F. So that is that. So that was not the hard question, okay? So this people got, so kind of Prada Lu for um, divergence. And now we want, basically, whoever says Prada Lu says integration by parts. So we'll also derive some integration by parts formula, but with the following thing. Here's now the question. question that basically no one got. Suppose it's a PDE question. So suppose u is a function of three variables. Maybe let me write f, it's easier. f is a function of three variables. And f solves Laplacian of f equals zero on, let's say, the ball of radius r centered at zero, like this. 
this is 0, 0, 0. This has radius r. And moreover, we say f equals 0 on the sphere. S0 r. So inside that ball, it solves Laplace's equation. On the boundary, f is 0. And I'm claiming that f has to be identically equal to 0 everywhere. This is the question. No one got it. It's slightly tricky, but let me tell you that it is possible to do it. So Laplacian of f, right? This is just fxx plus fyy plus fzz. Okay. And notice what it is. It's really the divergence of fx, fy, fz. Because you take the first component differentiated with respect to x, the second one with y, the third one with z. So this is really the divergence of the gradient of f. Okay, now, and we know this is zero. Now remember what we had, right? Um, we had the following thing. So we know this integration by parts formula. So I think divergence of ff, that's gradient of f dotted with f plus f times the divergence of f. Now, we know the Laplacian can, so we know little f. That's given, not a problem. The question is, what is capital F? Well, capital F, the only choice we have is the gradient. So what we have here, the following. So replacing this, so f times the gradient of f equals gradient of f times gradient of f plus divergence of gradient of f. This is again the Laplacian of f, and it goes to zero. So what we get now is the divergence of f gradient of f equals the length of f squared. Now, there's one more thing we have. So, um, we have not used the fact that f is 0 on the boundary. So, it would be great if from this equation, we could get something on the boundary. And look, this is the divergence. So, the only thing we can do is use the divergence theorem. So, let's integrate that over that ball. Then, what do we get? By the divergence theorem, it equals to the surface integral over the sphere of f gradient of f dotted with the normal vector. And that equals to the triple integral over the ball of the length of f squared. But now, what do we know about f on the surface? We know it's 0. So basically, this integral is 0, which tells you that the triple integral over the ball of gradient of f squared is 0. But look, this is a positive function. So the only way an integral of a positive function is 0 is if that function is 0. So the gradient of f squared equals 0. So the gradient of f equals 0. So basically, f is constant. And if you want, since the ball is connected, uh, it's really constant everywhere. The question is, what is that constant? So it's constant here, but if it's, let's say, if it has to agree with the boundary, so if it's continuous, then that constant must be zero. Because how can f be one and then suddenly zero? No, that wouldn't work. So it's zero, and therefore f is identically equal to zero on that ball. And this is, at least in my experience, the hardest uh, multi hardest question on the hardest multivariable calculus test. So, uh, maybe not the hardest multivariable calculus test people did well, but still, it's good. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.